Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to um, today's webinar about simulating mod and debris flows in two dimensions. Um, my name is Reynaldo Garcia, I'm the Director of Model Development at Hadronia, um, and I will be your presenter today. Um, so, um, the simulations of mod and debris flows is uh, certainly a challenge. It's a, it's a very complex phenomenon that involves uh, many different types of flows uh, that range from the very dilute turbulent flows down to the very granular, granular, um, very uh, you know, little uh, wet uh, type of mudslides and landslide flows. Um, so it's a it's a very complicated uh, phenomenon with a very different uh, simulation types that are required normally. That involves also steep slopes, high velocities, and regime changes that can vary from supercritical to subcritical. And there are many approaches that can be uh, tried here that. Uh, it can range from single phase, two phase, Lagrange, uh, two phase Lagrangian uh, type of uh, flows or analysis. Um, the usually the simulations involve also a flow over complex terrain. Uh, often the boundaries involved are irregular and and require uh, adapting uh, the flow to the obstacles buildings that can occur uh, in, in the uh, area of interest. And uh, the uh, modern debris flows are uh, most of the time characterized by viscous non-Newtonian fluids that uh, exhibit flow stoppage. So at some point during the event, the, the fluid stops in, in certain regions when the the stress that acts on the fluid is not enough to put it to put it in movement, so uh, it is a quite uh, quite involved um, effort that is required to model this these events. Um, I'm, I want to show uh, um, a short video um, that um, I, I was uh, kindly allowed to share it with you by Rankin Studio. Uh, it, is, it is available in, in YouTube anyway. You can feel free to watch it there. Uh, but let me let me um, let me uh, share it with you part of this video. Um, I'm not going to show it uh, the whole but I want to uh, stress uh, a part of it that is very illustrative I think. To show you what what type of flows we can deal with, so this is a this is a debris flow in Utah. Is uh, as you can see, it has um, you know kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, vegetation, uh, parts of trees, uh, branches, and and it's very uh, variable in the cross section of this particular channel. As you can see here. You have some areas of the flow that that get stopped on the uh, sides of uh, of the flow area, and and also you can see that the velocities vary in the cross section. So this is a, a very difficult event to characterize by one dimensional models, and one of the reasons we approach it with two dimensional models is because the the velocities. And, and the depth of flow may vary significant, significantly on the on the area uh, that we want to model. Um, another um, video that I wanted to share with you is is one uh, about an event that occurred in Minas Gerais in Brazil uh, last year. Uh, it was caused actually by a dam break, but it's characterized by a um, debris flow or mud flow event because the fluid was so viscous uh, and and can be assumed to be a non non uh, Newtonian fluid 
Um, let me let me show you uh, this short event. It's a BBC News uh, video. But you see that there is uh, a lot of mud here, so it's very viscous, and you can see the. So the devastation that can be uh, generated by uh, this type of event is is very important, and and one of the reasons that uh, they create a lot of of damage is is caused by the uh, depth of flow that can occur, the velocity of the fluid, and also the fluid characteristics that is very dense and viscous, and and that creates a lot of uh, of, of of powerful uh, impact on the structures where it it affects. Um, so the, the the issue that this actual events uh, uh, causes on, on on the requirements that it it imposes on modeling and models uh, are are varied, and in particular for two dimensional modeling, uh, the the requirements uh, are that the the models are are, should be capable of resolving uh, complex terrain um, and, and urban areas with obstacles. Uh, it, it should handle uh, a model should ha handle abrupt regime changes with supercritical and subcritical uh, regimes. Uh, they should provide alternative rheological formulations that uh, should be capable of handling this very different range of uh, characteristics and the fluid that, uh, as you can see, can occur from turbulent to landslide um, and very viscous uh, fluids with stoppage. So the, the fluid should be able to stop at some point when the stress acting is, is not high enough. Uh, obviously, the uh, model should be accurate enough for predicting depth and frontal wave arrivals. And velocities, uh, and also they should be fast, um, at least fast enough to make it practical of use. If you have a model that takes a, a couple of days uh, to run, uh, or, or even a day to run, uh, that imposes a lot of of uh, effort on the consultant that is performing a simulation, and that can can make the difference between, um, you know having a, a practical uh, solution to a problem or not being able to do it at all. So the model should run in, in reasonable times. Now I'm focusing uh, on the river flow 2D model uh, because that's a model that uh, Hydronia develops and distributes. Um, it's a combined hydrologic hydraulic model uh, that is based on flexible mesh. Uh, formed by triangle cells that can be adapted to any geometry. Uh, it can handle dry and wet bed uh, with an explicit finite volume numerical engine that is uh, highly accurate, that solves uh, supercritical, subcritical regimes, uh, sediment transport, pollutant transport, modern debris flows, which is the focus of today's webinar. So the the um, river flow two version for model flow flows is, is uh, named river flow two D MD. Um, you can also use the model to uh, account for hydraulic structures in two D uh, bridges, gates, and so forth. Um, it works in English or metric units, up to the user to select which unit system to use. Um, has a user interface that is now based on the SMS, uh, Quabeo SMS graphical user interface to develop the mesh and, and generate visualizations of the results. And it has a GPU module uh, for accelerating the model runs. I will talk about this a little bit today as well. And uh, it's been used uh, and activated and validated worldwide. 
Now, all this is possible um, due to a collaboration that Hydronia has with the University of Zaragoza Computational Hydraulics Group. Uh, we have a very active uh, collaboration uh, agreement uh, that allows to develop this highly uh, accurate and fast computer codes. You're welcome to visit the website of uh, of the uh, University of Zaragoza Computational Hydraulics Group to, for more details. Um, now the model works as a, set, uh, with a flexible mesh and what the flexible mesh means is that you have a control over the size of the triangles that you want to use to capture your site and, and these triangles uh, can obviously have not only variable size but also can be refine uh, in different regions and, and you can also extract some of the uh, obstacles that could occur here to uh, isolate uh, or, or determine which areas are going to be used or not on your modeling uh, simulation. So that, that brings a lot of flexibility and that's uh, the source of the name flexible mesh because you can focus the high resolution areas to those uh, zones on, on your uh, domain where you want to have really high detail and use very large elements where you don't need so much detail. So that flexibility gives uh, a, a lot of, uh, of um, advantages to the user uh, because it allows the model to run much faster than uh, if you would need to use very small elements everywhere. Now, not only you have uh, the flexibility of the triangular um, mesh, <clears throat> excuse me, but also in each element, uh, the velocity can vary in, in every direction. It's not uh, limited to a single direction or a few directions. Uh, it, it's uh, dependent on the solution. Uh, the velocities can vary uh, in, in any direction and also the model calculates the depth of flow uh, and the uh, variation of the bed in the case of the sediment transport model. Now the model equations uh, are uh, the standard shallow water equations. It's just that uh, we have the option to use uh, different formulations for the stress terms that affect how the fluid behaves uh, on it's not only limited to water, but you can have fluids that vary in density and viscosity uh, through the domain. So the basic equations are the conservation of mass and momentum, and it, they are expressed in full conservative form. Now for uh, the Newtonian fluids such as water, the relationship between uh, shear stress and the shear rate is a linear one. And, and it doesn't vary with the shear rate. The viscosity is constant throughout the computation. And it's very simple to implement in this type of models. Um, now, in the case of non-Newtonian fluids, such as those occurring in, um, in mod and debris flow events, uh, you have many different uh, types of uh, fluids that you can account for. Uh, you, this is the Newtonian uh, fluid, typical of, of the water, for example. But the non-Newtonian fluids can have can exhibit, for example, a, a yield stress. So they, you would need to have a minimum stress acting on the fluid to allow movement. But also, when they move, they can move with a single viscosity or the, even the viscosity can be dependent on the shear rate. So all of these are realistic and possible occurrences of fluids that uh, you could have in, in real events. And it is important to account for all of these features in a model to capture realistically what uh, it could occur in, in these events. Now the details of uh, how uh, these are uh, fluids are can be implemented in the model. Um, it, it, it 
you know, can be um, observed in these equations. Uh, you have the yield stress. You have the, the, the Latin inertial uh, grain sharing relations for the, the more um, uh, solid phase of the fluid. And, and this sol more solid phase of the fluid uh, can be handled with the Coulomb relationship for granular material. And, and this allows to um, uh, model uh, the, uh, with, with the data provided to the model uh, through the friction angle, solid density, and cohesive strength, uh, you can model the even granular material as they occur in landslides, for example. So the formulations that are available for any users who want to apply the river flow to the MD model uh, are eight in all, and they range uh, from simple turbulent or well, relatively simple turbulent uh, flow uh, based on Mannes equations such as water uh, flow. But then you have uh, the different formulations for non-Newtonian fluids uh, that include the Bingham model, simplified Bingham model, uh, turbulent and Coulomb for uh, more granular combinations of fluid uh, and down to the purely granular uh, formulation. And in this particular case, uh, um, you, you can model, as I said before, uh, fluids that have very little water content. So the, this range of formulations allows you to um, approach simulations of events that range from dilute fluids to, even to landslides or granular flow um, types of events. Uh, if you want to get more details about this um, formulation and how they are implemented in, in in the river flow 2D model. Uh, you have these two papers that uh, were published by uh, researchers of the University of Zaragoza. And, and they have, uh, again, all the details, not only of the uh, analytical formulation, but also the numerical implementation in the river flow 2D model. Now, this numerical implementation um, has a practical effect on the model and uh, the the uh, advantage is that the the model is accurate regardless of the flow regime so no matter how high the velocities or low velocities may be or how big is the bed gradient uh, you get uh, a an accurate solution for for any simulation the volume or mass conservation is always ensured and is is not always in the range of 10 to the minus 14 percent which for all practical applications can be considered a zero error which means that the volume of the fluid is is always conserved in um, in any uh, simulation um, Oh, another uh, numerical property is that the numerical solution is insensitive to the time step that the model uses. Uh, the, the time step is actually dynamically and automatically controlled by the model. You don't need to set any time step. The model will adjust the time step dynamically during the computation to um, uh, fulfill two purposes, to have a stable solution and at the same time use the largest time step possible to make the model run faster. So, uh, but regardless of what uh, current number you would pick, normally you use the uh, current number one, but if you want to use the uh, a lower uh, current number, the model will always run uh, and will provide uh, exactly the same results. Um, the model has been fully uh, validated. Uh, I will present some results today of validations. Uh, but uh, the, 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 all these tests and, and hundreds of, of practical applications from many users worldwide show that the models is always stable, consistent, and convergent under any realistic river in or, or flow situation. 
Now, there are numbers of tools that, uh, that we provide uh, to use the model. Um, one of them is the Data Input Program, uh, or DIP. And the Data Input Program allows uh, to enter non, mainly non-spatial data, like options of which module you want to use, model debris flow, pollutant transport, sediment transport, etc. cetera. Uh, it allows you to set which components you want. Uh, for example, in this case, you have rainfall and, uh, and infiltration, um, but you have bridges, culverts, sources, sinks, internal rating tables, weirs, wind, effect on the water surface, uh, bridges and gates. Uh, you have also metric or English units options and four parallel computation. I will uh, briefly touch on this uh, in a minute. Uh, but you have two options for the CPU version. You can select how many cores you want to use and as many as you have available uh, in, in your computer. Uh, but if you use the GPU version, um, you, you can um, use the uh, graphic card to accelerate your computations as well. Uh, in the case of the MD module or the MOD and the brief flow module, uh, you normally select which formulation from the eight available um, you want to use. And then the yield stress, Bingham viscosity, internal friction angle, and material density. Uh, obviously, depending on which formulation you select, uh, none of, not all of, of this are required. Uh, but you, you can enter the, the ones that um, are appropriate for your particular uh, simulation. Then when the model runs, uh, you get a dynamic window that allows you to see the progress of your simulation. And in this dynamic window, you have a status of how many cells are being used in your mesh, the, the basic topo, uh, the water depth, uh, at the particular time of, of simulation, uh, the time step that is being used. And very importantly, uh, you get a report of the volume conservation error that is normally very low, as you can see here. Uh, inflow and outflow, depending if you have inflow and outflow conditions and so forth. You can pause the simulation, stop it, uh, or close it, and, uh, and uh, restart it. Uh, at a later time if that's needed. So when, when you end the simulation, you have a number of options for visualizations. What you see here is an animation uh, that's created with traces uh, of the uh, flow around two houses. And you have these uh, options for any of the modules that, that you uh, select in the mo model. A very um, useful option of the rear flow 2D model is the GPU version. The GPU version allows to run any simulation uh, at a, a much shorter time than the CPU version. Uh, the, the, the thing is that if you use a, a model, particularly a two-dimensional model that is not paralyzed uh, or is uh, paralyzed in a way that is not very efficient, the simulations tend to be very slow. And when I say very slow, depending, this depends on how detailed the mesh is. Um, now, if you have a lot of cells, you need a lot of detail in your area of interest, um, your model can run, if it's not paralyzed, can run for several hours, sometimes several days, and sometimes I uh, have seen runs that take more than one week and even several weeks. So it can be very, very time consuming. Uh, and the reason that this is time consuming is because you need a lot, perform a lot of simula a lot of computations every time step. And the typical CPUs, the, the central processing units that you use in, in uh, widely available computers like the Intel or AMD, uh, they are optimized for a single thread. So um, this means that one instruction of the computer code is executed sequentially after the other. 
Now, there is a trend to use multiple CPUs with multiple core computers. And if your code can take advantage of that, and this is very important because not all codes uh, are, I mean, it's, it's not enough to just use a better computer with more, co more cores. It's, you need to have a, a computer model that takes advantage of having more cores or more uh, processors. And that obviously helps in improving the velocity of the model runs. Uh, so parallelization with multiple processors or, or cores is the only way uh, and, and, and widely available uh, option, at least, to accelerate the computations. Now, the problem is that supercomputers are not accessible for most, and, and the number of cores that are available for the CPU computers are very limited. It can be maybe 16. You can find computers nowadays with 32 cores, but they are, they are very uh, expensive and not so widely available. Um, the way we have approached the Riverflow 2D acceleration is through the GPU, the use of GPU cards. And the GPU cards are nothing more than uh, video cards that were initially built to uh, accelerate the graphics processing in the computers. It, that's, that's why they call the graphic cards also. Uh, but these graphic processing units uh, have been found to be also effectively uh, able to accelerate the computation if your code is able to perform uh, the computations in the graphic card. And that obviously required an effort to generate uh, a program, a computer code, that takes advantage of these cards. Uh, so normally, they, these GPUs are present on, on all video cards. And we, we particularly use the NVIDIA uh, cards for this purpose. They often have more than 1,000 processors nowadays. You can find uh, cards with 3,000 processors and so. It's not, not uncommon. And, and, and this table shows uh, some of the cards that we have tested and have been proven to be very efficient. You can see here, uh, some of the cards have uh, 2,000 processors. Some of them can have uh, 5,000 or on that range. Um, the memory on the card is also important because when you use such card, uh, all the computations occur on the car and you have uh, on that card and you have to bring uh, the internally the model needs to bring the data uh, from the CPU memory to the GPU memory. Now uh, this has a cost obviously some of the cards uh, can be very expensive some of them are are not so expensive uh, but in practical terms this means that the the model can run up to and, and sometimes more than 150 times faster than non-parallelized model. And this has tremendous practical impact on your computation. Because if you have a computation that takes, uh, let's, let's say, uh, six hours, as I will show you in a minute, and you can bring down that time to six minutes, it means that you can do in a day 10 times or even more than 10 times uh, runs uh, than you would be able to do if you didn't have a GPU uh, model. So let me uh, share with you some of the uh, results of the Rearflow 2D model in regards to mod and the brief flow applications. Uh, and first, uh, I want to present a, a few um, of the tests that the model has passed to uh, validate its results. Um, some of them are very simple, like the dam break with a Coulomb formulation. This is a simple test where we have a dam of a certain fluid that is can be a non-Newtonian fluid. And uh, suddenly we'll, we remove the dam uh, from this. It's, a, like a, it's like a gate. And then we see what happens with 
with the fluid uh, down this uh, surface. So what um, the advantage of this test is that they have an analytical solution, and they are, this analytical solution, even though they are very uh, limited to simplistic cases like this, uh, nonetheless, they allow to check the model for uh, numerical errors. And, and you would be surprised to know that some models uh, out there uh, sometimes are not even tested for, for these simple formulations. And, and the advantage also is that if you only limit uh, the model testing for real cases, in real cases, normally you need to adjust many parameters to calibrate the model. And in this adjustment, if, if you, you may have errors in the model and they get masked uh, with, with the uh, adjustment that you may make. So in this particular uh, test, the exact solution is fully replicated by the formulation of the rear flow 2D and D, as you can see here. This is for a particular time. Another, a little more involved case is uh, also a an, an non-Newtonian fluid uh, with the Coulomb relationship in, in a slope. Uh, in this case, you have a finite uh, a volume of fluid upstream. And you can see here, in this case, in the previous case, we had an analytical solution. In this case, uh, we have measured. It, it, it is a, a measure results, and you can see here that the uh, replication of the computed results uh, is very, very good. Um, this is another case where we have an, an initial uh, cylinder with a non-Newtonian fluid. We remove that cylinder and we let it we let the fluid go and we observe how the depth of this fluid evolve in time. And in this case also the results are very, very good. Uh, one thing that um, is important to remark here is that if you uh, use uh, unstructured flexible mesh like the one you have in the river flow 2D model, this is this is a case of of this uh, initial cylinder that you remove and you let it go, um, the uh, results are very symmetrical, as you can see here. But if you use a structure grid as, as those available in, in models that use square elements, uh, sometimes you get this um, uh, weird um, preference directions of, of flow, or, or you get this non-symmetrical uh, solution for the models and and that's uh, very typical of structured grid and another advantage of using a flexible mesh with triangles that tends to provide this more realistic uh, results. Uh, some other more involved tests uh, we have run with uh, in this case with uh, a very large slope test. Uh, in this case this is a channel of parabolic uh, cross-section very steep here, and then it gets to a, a very uh, a almost flat surface downstream. And um, the, the solutions are being compared with measurements. And you see here for different times how uh, the solutions um, uh, of the uh, numerical model here in these uh, contour lines uh, resembles the uh, measured results. You get, uh, you know, not exact sometimes, as you can see here, but the frontal wave is very accurate most of the time. See here an animation of, of this. And I, what, what I want to stress here is two things. One, that the model is able to predict the stoppage of, of the fluid in this almost horizontal uh, area here and I will uh, uh, resume the animation but you can see here uh, the velocities and the symmetry in the velocities is, is very impressive which is very important for practical applications. Um, another more realistic uh, um, test is the Kami-Kami-Hori uh, Valley debris flow 
uh, it's a, a real value in Japan that has been used for uh, comparing uh, numerical validating numerical models for debris flows over the years. Uh, it has approximately two kilometer in length and and it's ten meter wide. Um, and in this particular applications, we ran the model and compare. This is the uh, time versus uh, distance, and you can see here that uh, when time increases, the distance uh, of this is a frontal wave um, uh, distance, and you can see here that it converges to uh, a limit value, which means that the model is predicting the stoppage of the fluid very well. This is an animation of what happens if you had only turbulent flow or Manning's equation, or if you have the non-Newtonian uh, behavior or use of the model with non-Newtonian fluid uh, with this parameter, turbulent yield and clomb option, one of the formulations in the river flow to model. And you will see here that the, the fluid uh, accelerates down the slope and when it gets to this um, this wider area and less steep area downstream in the case of the turbulent uh, flow it, it continues downstream but in the case of the non-Newtonian fluid it tends to stop uh, on this uh, wider area so you see here it continues downstream uh, but then it stops uh, around this area when when it finished the simulation. Even more realistic, uh, this is was an actual event uh, that occurred in Rod Creek uh, near Farmington, Utah, in 1983. Uh, the advantage of this event is that it was very well documented by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, we use it for testing the model in this uh, a very real case. It's a small area, but uh, again, well documented. And, and the model was able to predict or replicate the affected area that is shown here in this yellow um, and green line here. This is the extent of the affected area. But very importantly, uh, uh, the observed depth were very good um, uh, capture here. Uh, of for example, 3.7 was the maximum observed uh, depth of accumulation of this uh, dense fluid, and the model predicted uh, 3.9 meters. Um, and also, the velocities were very well, um, very well reproduced. So it, it is a validation of the model with an actual event. Um, another application of the brief flow models is for tailing stamps. And, and tailing stamps are, are dams where your uh, the fluid accumulating behind the dam is not water; is is a mix of solids and and water. And sometimes it's it's very dry. Sometimes it's very wet, depending on on the dam condition. And this particular case is a is a dam. It's an actual dam. We are not allowed to provide the name, but it's it's in South America. Um, and uh, the dam height is uh, nine, 90 meters. Um, these are the initial elevations of the dam accumulation. So it's, a, it's quite a volume. It's about 8 million cubic meter of material that uh, are accumulated behind the dam. Uh, now, the, the problem is that the, uh, the, the, there, are, there are different analyses that you need to make for performing a risk uh, assessment of a dam like this and you need to assume for example very dry conditions of the fluid and very wet conditions because they will affect in a in a very high degree the run out run out of of the fluid from the dam downstream and this is what we did uh, we uh, analyzed uh, two cases one with very dry material assuming uh, and using the ground flow formulation with this uh, data was measured in the field. And also another case with very wet material uh, with using the Bingham formulation uh, of non-Newtonian uh, fluid. Uh, they lead to very different results. For example, uh, this is the uh, case A or granular material case 
uh, flow extent after one hour, almost the fluid stops already here. Uh, this is the dam location. So it, it travels uh, about uh, 500 meters downstream from the dam only. Now, in the case of uh, the wet material uh, with the Bingham formulation, the fluid travels 14 kilometers downstream. So uh, if you would have a, a model that wouldn't handle different formulations, and if you had, for example, only this one here, uh, you would be only accounting for part of, of what realistically could occur in this particular uh, mod flow event. So that's one of the uh, things that we offer is that we want to provide the users to have uh, the, the full range of realistic possibilities that could be modeled with a mod and the brief flow uh, simulation. Um, the last uh, um, example I want to show you is uh, a landslide in Spain that, that was simulated. Uh, this is the uh, initial um, mass of fluid. It's a very steep valley, and, and this, this is obviously a very steep uh, escarpment here. Uh, it was done with uh, the development version of the model that is not yet commercial. Uh, it's the GPU version for the ModFlow model. Uh, and is reported in this um, paper you see here by La Casta uh, and others in computers and geosciences. Um, it uses almost 900,000 cells. And uh, I will show you the animation of the results. So you, what you see here uh, are depth of the material, and th these are velocities. You would see the range of the velocities is quite impressive. So everything occurs quite rapidly. So in a matter of, uh, of minutes, you get this accumulation downstream, uh, very uh, high depth. And also, you see here, the velocities are almost zero, except from uh, some other velocities are uh, in the steep areas here. But the model is able to uh, represent the stopping of, of the uh, fluid and also the accumulation that can occur this type of events. Now, from the speed up point of view, this is the comparison of computer times between the uh, CPU one core or non parallelized river flow to the model which could be equivalent to a model that is not parallelized, uh, using the CPU version with four cores, and using the a GPU Tesla card. Uh, that is not uh, the latest, uh, um, uh, one of the latest versions, uh, but it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, GPU card. Um, now, the uh, non-parallelized version takes up six hours more than six hours to run this short simulation. The GPU uh, brings down the time to 2.4 hours, so it's 2.6 faster already than the non parallelized version. And the GPU version, it takes uh, 0.11 hours, it's about six minutes, it's about 60 times faster than the non parallelized version. Now, this has, as I said before, a very important impact on your practical workflow. Uh, it, it brings down, in this particular application, your computer times from six hours to six minutes. And you, you can think on, you know, if you had this, this tool at your uh, disposal, you can, uh, think on either using the, the model to run more scenarios for your clients, or you can uh, do your work in less time that you would uh, require if you didn't have the GPU version. So that's what we want to provide these tools to improve your workflow efficiency. 
Now, uh, before uh, finalizing, I want to invite you to our uh, Hadronia YouTube channel. Um, I apologize for the for the uh, complicated uh, link here, but you can go go, go to YouTube or Google uh, Hydronia uh, at um, or River Flow to Knee in YouTube, and you will see you have we have uh, many uh, videos from previous webinars that you can. Uh, watch there, um, and you're free to uh, watch it at your uh, convenience. Now, um, to finalize, I want to answer any questions you may have. Um, so feel free to use your questions panel um, to make any questions, and I will try to answer uh, as many as I can. So let me see. I have already a few questions here. Um, I have a um, okay. I have a questions about the availability of the data sets of the tests for the data sets. Yeah, they they are available. They've been published, uh, and they are uh, they are available for for anyone um, that. They, they will require um, so they yes they, the answer is yes um, uh, I have a question here do we need to input sediment contents in the model well the the information for the model and debris flow the data that you enter depends on the formulation that uh, you select for example let me let me see if I have uh, I can show it to he to you here, uh, this is the data input program, and uh, if you select, for example, the simplified Bingham formulation requires the material density, the viscosity, and the yield stress. Uh, but if you want to use the granule material, you only need to enter the internal friction angle and the density. So it depends on which formulation that you select. You will need to enter uh, more or less uh, data uh, here. Okay, so uh, can you use it for laminar uh, flows? Well, uh, uh, yes, in, in the sense that you uh, define when you define the viscosity of the fluid. If you have a, a very high viscosity the fluid will behave as as a laminar uh in laminar flow will flow in laminar flow so in that sense yes with with a free surface actually we have we have a, a um another model that we use for simulating oil spills overland oil spills and they are characterized obviously by laminar flows most of the time um what type of what data types does the software use to generate the flexible mesh? Well, we use uh, we need um, you normally have a terrain information X Y Z data or in a number of formats you can have shape files you can have uh, you can use uh, ASCII grid files uh, to enter your terrain and then you enter the the size that you want your elements uh, approximate size but you ha you have tools to refine the mesh in different areas and, and things like that and we use sms for that um does the flow cross sections include main channel and floodplain yeah you can include in 2d models you can include the floodplain and and the main channel in, in any way you want so it does not it's not limited to to um to the um, to the channel. Um, uh, the, I have a question here. Is possible to simulate the dynamics of a hyperconcentrated material within a reservoir that is evacuated from there because of a dam breach? Yes. Yeah. Actually, the the example that I show it to you, uh, this example here. Uh, is is a dam break and the material the initial stage of the material is 
uh, is defined by the user. So the user selected an initial elevation for this material here. And, and in this particular situation, the user entered uh, gates to simulate the, the dam break. And there were different, different gates that were open at different times to simulate a very complex dam break that, that they analyze here. But the, yeah, the fluid in the dam was originally um, um, hyper-concentrated. Uh, uh, interesting question. Do we sacrifice any accuracy in computation using GPU instead of CPU? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, we have tests and we have run tests where we compare the GPU and CPU results and they are virtually and almost exactly the same at a very high level of accuracy. So you can expect to get exactly or almost exactly the same results from the CPU uh, and the GPU. Uh, oh gosh, I have a number of questions here. Let me see how many I can have a few more minutes. Um, what data type does this software use to generate flexible? Oh, I did that already. Um, Mm, we are interested in using this uh, model for dam breach. Uh, can we set a dam breach time for the dam failure? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, using the, the using gates, you use uh, the gate component for the dam, and in the gates component, you can define times when the times of, of this virtual gate will open and how gradually it will open, and if you have variable gates you can also model how uh, the the width uh, expansion of the breach uh, for a tailings breach uh, can the model incorporate mud and debris flow with the river system to evacuate increased saturation of the materials and impacts upstream of the confluence of the river and tailing bridge well uh, I, i'm not sure i understand Fully the question, but but the uh, when you use the 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 non-Newtonian fluid, the assumption is that the uh, that the properties of the fluid are the same. Uh, so um, if if you have a, a, a river downstream, um, the assumption is that the the uh, material properties uh, will be the same throughout the computation. I, I, I'm, I don't know if I've been able to answer the questions correctly, but uh, um, what's the optimal parameter for calibration? Well, if you have uh, fluid measurements, you have little to do, and uh, you just use your measured or uh, values for for your fluid properties. If you don't have fluid properties, then you can uh, vary the fluid properties as a calibration parameters. And the, the yield stress, for example, in some of the formulations, is the one that will determine mostly when the fluid is going to stop. And if you have previous events that show the maximum extent of the fluid, that will help you calibrate the, the affected area. Oof. What's the largest largest scale we can run the model? Um, I'm not sure I understand well, but the model has been applied. Um, we have applications of the model for um, 600 kilometers, 400 miles of rivers, and um, you know we have an ongoing uh, a user that it has an ongoing application. For a complete island um, with with uh, twenty million cells, so uh, it, it depends on mostly on you. It's not limited per se. Um, uh, I have another question here. It is planned to include some mechanism to incorporate the dam breach as a time dependent function. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we it's not yet available in the model, but uh, something that is uh, being developed is a, a dam bridge um, model that uh, allows you to simulate 
the the breach itself, uh, and and that's something that will be um, most probably be we are ready for a release uh, later this year. Um, okay, I, I think I'm, I ran out of time. I have a couple of other questions. Uh, I have here, oh, yeah, I have what, what's the price of the program? Oh, uh, thanks for the question because I almost forgot. Um, 